Welcome to NMRO's version of the Sunday Funnies, where superheroes spring to life from fiberglass bodies. And for a brief three seconds, it's as if they occupy the cockpit. Race cars have a way of doing this when someone's pushing a hole through the floorboard. Wild bravado shakes hands with high performance every time a mud racer goes to the line. This is Trucks and Tractor Power featuring the best in NMRO mud racing. Today, from the Allen County Fairgrounds in Lima, Ohio, it's the Four Wheel Jamboree Spring Nationals. For truck lovers, the Jamboree is a kaleidoscope of sound and color, a canvas filled with chrome and candy apple pinstriping and tons of horsepower. It's the jamboree that makes the pages of four-wheel and off-road magazine come to life. In fact, a walk through the show and shine area would tell you that these trucks are an extension of the owner's personality. But there is so much other activity going on right now in front of the main grandstand. And here with that story is Army Armstrong. Some people call it poor man's drag racing, but that's not the case at all. The names on the side of the vehicles tell you exactly how the drivers are going to attack the track at Lima, Ohio. Lima known as one stop of the Triple Crown of Mud Racing. Everybody wants to take a win out of here. It has always provided a ton of action, and today should be no exception. Trust me. We've had showers off and on all weekend. Now, that makes it tough on tuning an engine, and Army Armstrong earlier addressed that issue. Hey, Gary, whether it's cold or whether it's hot, there's bound to be weather, whether or not. You said that when you were a kid, and you're just kind of playing, but today, it's no play thing. This is a complete weather station that one of the drivers has set up in a pit area. Why a weather station? It's real simple. The amount of fuel and air you mix in a supercharged engine is critical. That's where the horsepower comes from. We noticed that this driver has found a baseline with his weather station and decided to go from a big pulley on front to a smaller one. Look at the difference in the sizes of those pulleys. Now the smaller pulley forces more air into the engine, making it turn quicker. So the driver's telling us that there's not enough really good air at the track today. He goes to a smaller pulley to compensate for that to get the right fuel and air mixture. Ready for the class six paddle tire competition in overtime, that is Keith Barry in Hill Stage against Rick Dempsey and the Mud Patrol. Dempsey's gonna be driving a vehicle that has a history behind it. It's a past world champion, but this kid's new. We know the vehicle can do it. The question is, can the young driver step up to this ride? Both of them with alcohol burning, big block Chevrolet engine, horsepower, horsepower, horsepower. An open coupe against a sedan model. Quick run. Let's check the time. Barry's a 281. 281. And Dempsey, a 329. The 281's a good number, Gary, and the open car seems to have an advantage. The drivers seem to be able to see better. We'll come back and talk to Barry as we return to Lila. Welcome back to the Allen County Fairgrounds here in Lima, Ohio, where Ford trucks present the four-wheel Jamboree Spring Nationals part of the Special Events Performance Series. Let's send it out on Army to talk to one of the first down the track, Keith Berry. Name of the vehicle's overtime, but right now this is the guy with the quick time. Is an early draw to your advantage today? Seems to be. What about the rest of the field? What do they look at in the back when they see a guy like you cut a, a sub three second run in the front? Uh, it's gonna run a lot faster. There's a lot of quick cars out there, so it'll be a good run for everybody today, I think. Also, his indication is the track may remain about the same. Give everybody a chance for a good run as we take a look inside the cockpit of Psycho. Psycho is David Whitehurst, and he stages alongside Chuck Knoll's stepchild. David Whitehurst and his father teamed up on this vehicle. The stepchild, I kind of tease this guy because he even blew his own doors off trying to get it ready. It's basically a late model vehicle, but he's kind of stripped it down to where I don't even know what it looks like, Gary. 
It is fast, like, I'll tell you that. It could have been an old Bronco or an old Blazer. But right now, it's just real fast. That's all he wants. Get in the far lane, 25 years old. No, one of the veterans, Wiley Veterans, out of the Sunshine State of Florida in the lane closest to us. And the name on the car kind of says it all. Well, a good Watch run for oh, Dole. Oh, and hang on, on, hang on. He almost does a bootleg spin to get a woe. A 256. Hey, that's the benchmark. 256. And for David and Psycho, a 286. That was a good side-by-side -side run. That's what this sport's all about. But when the replay comes up, I want you to notice on the left side of the screen, the driver's sliding, and he actually has to get back in the throttle to get the car settled down. Watch it. He's sliding, sliding. He's got to hit the throttle right now. Person, he right does here, yeah. finally save it, keeps it from going on over, but he takes that at 256, and here's Army. Some people do this for fun. I can't understand that. There's like a lot of work to clean this thing up real quick. Okay, he's got his helmet off. Two, five, nine. That was an awesome run. But the run was one thing. The shutdown area looked like a whole new ball game for you. Yeah, it's still a little wet down in there in that grass, and you get off in the grass, and it gets sliding around. And I was a little sideways coming out the end, so that hurt me too, Army. Well, I think, Army, you said a two, five, nine. It was actually two, five, six officially as we look at a touch of madness coming up next. Gary Reddick, he'll take on uh, the famous Steve Behrman in chemical reaction, the Moo car. Ooh, that's right across yeah, the front the of the car. Industry, that's right. There's your time to beat at 2.56. Both drivers working the lines, rolling into the beams, like we said before, just like drag race, you got to break a beam, and you're not racing each other, you're racing the clock. It's a real fast clock. Hey. That would indicate that uh, Steve was way out on the uh, light, but again, you're racing the clock at 2.83 for chemical reaction. And a look at uh, the touch of Madness time, 3.10. The 283 is a good number. you got to remember the baseline for good to fair is anything quicker than three seconds. A good look there at Jeff Myers in the boss. He'll be taking on Chris Kane and raising Kane. But first, Army had a chance to catch up with Steve Behrman, the driver of the chemical reaction. Well, again, I want you to notice something. The vehicles are picking up a whole lot of mud. Now, this is a, it's a, it's a mud race. You know you're going to get a little bit muddy, but this mud's causing some problems for them, some handling problems, because if you look at the driver's visors, they literally can't see out of them. They have to kick the visors up when they get to the end of the track. A good run. Do you think the track's going to get better as we go further into the field? There's no starting line there. You know, we spend a lot of money to build a lot of horsepower, and KCD chassis built his chassis to try putting it to the ground. That Jim Hottie horsepower is too much for the track, and it spun real hard, and we had to pedal it. Well, there is a good look at the boss. That is Jeff Myers, and he stages against Raisin Kane, driven by Chris Kane. There's the time to beat at 256. An even run as Chris has some trouble, bangs the water barrier, kind of kisses off like a billiard shot, keeps on driving. Well, the Yodok, yeah, the Yodok safety system that he got into was developed through this sport. Meanwhile, Myers goes to 263, Gary. Well, now watch again in the shutdown area as Chris has some difficulty. Far lane. Now watch him spin around, catch the barricade, and then he hits it a second time. Well, Kane had his problems, but uh, in the near lane, Jeff Myers had his own problems. Here's Army. The 263 number is a good number, but that's a bad sign. He hurt the motor. Did something look like to the front seal, but the run's over. He's got all week to put a Band-Aid on to get going again, but this... Uh, Hemi Ford motor, kind of a strange combination. Really laid down a good shot for him today. The oil is the bad sign. Gary? Staging now, Al Stebbins. Al, of course, won the Class 5 competition here at Lima, Ohio. And he pulls up alongside Jim Carr. Never satisfied, Jimmy Carr and Al Stebbins in rapid transit. But once again, the guy on top of the standings is Chuck Knoll at 256. That is the benchmark. And that is the uh, run that these guys are shooting for as Jimmy Carr stages never satisfied. It's going to be a good run. Both of them 23 Ford Roasters. The far lane is powered by a supercharged Ford. The near lane is powered by a supercharged Chevrolet engine. So if nothing else, somebody gets to go out of here with bragging rights if they don't go quicker than that 2.56. Both drivers with the alcohol engines letting a little bit of time, getting time on the engine, getting some heat in them. Stebbins with a good run. Let's check the time, though. 
a 286. Still three tenths of a second off the benchmark right now, turned in by Chuck Nolan. There's the 279 for Jim Carr. So once again, the standing showing Chuck Nolan on top with that 256, and it's Jeff Myers, Jim Carr, Keith Berry, and Steve Behrman. There is a ton of mud on the side of Stebbins' car. Army right now is with Jimmy Carr. A 279 tells me you guys are having to think. It's not all driving with your foot today, is it? No, it's not. It, the pit is slippery, and it just, if you type, air the tires right, and you can make a good pass. But the combination is getting the horsepower to stick to the ground. Yes, it definitely is. A lot more competition, a lot more mud coming your way. Welcome back to activity on the Midway, but right now let's check in with Army at the starting line. The Christmas tree you're looking at is 60 feet past the starting line. That 60 feet seems to be the critical area for the drivers today. You cannot stick the horsepower to the track in that area. Now you're looking at the actual starting line, and you notice how ruddy it is, but the rut you're looking at is about six inches of soft mud. Right underneath that six inches of mud, it's real hard. That's where the drivers say they're blowing the tires off. It's so hard, it's like starting on concrete. The mud's kind of deceiving. What you see is not always what you get. Well, coming up, two totally different ideas on how to run the mud. There is Red Heat, a rear engine car for Melvin Brown, and a good-looking car pulls up alongside Fred Wilhite in Money Pit. Now, you notice how easy Brown could just look down the track. Look at Wilhite looking around the blower, trying to find out where the groove is. I'm not going to say a thing about those little dingleberries on his helmet. <laughs> that kind of tells you about this guy's personality. That gives him better radio reception. Both drivers getting some heat in the engines. It's amazing. Everybody's sitting on the line a little bit longer today because of the weather conditions. But when it's right, they'll go. That was a run. Will Hyde's in trouble. That was a shot. He has trouble getting it slowed down. He's back on the throttle. He's seeing the throttle. He almost hit some equipment over there. But look at that. A 251. With all the trouble getting it slowed down, he had a 251. That puts him at the very top of the leaderboard. Watch the run again. He zings across that mud, but then he has trouble in the shutdown area. Call the old Dingleberry Shuffle because of little jobby dobbies on his helmet. But right oh, here man, he does he some driving. See, he has to go into the throttle real quick in order to settle the car down right now. Yeah, he wings the throttle right there, then climbs back on the brakes, does get it woed, and he's out of the car with Army. Well, we were talking about names and different things to tell you the personality of the people. Check this out. Yes, it's fast. No, you can't drive it. You have fun racing, don't you? I'm going to go ahead and talk while you're getting your helmet off and everything. But you and the, and the other guys that race, the camaraderie here, the friendship and the brotherhood is really unique until you go to that starting line, and then you guys put the war paint on, don't you? If it wasn't for the friendship, I would not race. And yes, I ain't going to let nobody beat me that I can beat. <laughs> well, one of Fred's uh, good buddies is Ron Pence, a real, real stalwart of this sport in Tater. Now, he is drawing a single in the far lane. Once again, that time to beat just laid down by Fred Wilhite at 2.51. Pence out of the show me state is capable. He runs the scooper tires on the back and the DOT tires on the front, telling me he's trying to loosen the car up a little. Good quick run, but will it be fast enough? He has trouble in the shutdown area as well. No, 2.79, 2.79 for Ron Pence in Tater. So that will not be quick enough as we take a look again, coming right at you from the end zone camera. See, what they're trying to do is loosen the front end of the car up, get it to stay on top of the mud. Now, he does it, but the problem area is in the finish line. That could cause us some problems before the day's over because it does not get a bit better. Dan Richter in the Richter scale now staging, and he goes up against Gary Osteen. And Gary drives the vehicle called the Dirty Bird out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Osteen owns a business down in South Florida, an automotive business. Runs the Ford, well, he's in the Ford and kind of likes to razz these Chevrolet and Chrysler boys if he can put a win under his belt. Let's take a look at the times. Looks like uh, Richter, Holstein first, 302 with his Ford Power Dirty Bird, which is indeed dirty and muddy right now. And Dan Richter, a 284. Uh, here's a good looking car, stressed out. I like the paint job on that. Yeah, I've got the uh, Castrol, white, green, and red. Kind of almost a John Four spinoff, if you will. Well, that's Roger Sherwood. And he will stage against Dan Vukovic in Bone Digger. Well, that name Vukovic, 
has a lot of history behind it, doesn't it, Gary? It's won a couple it. of Indy 500s. Yeah. But right now, the Bone Digger in blue. With the Bulldog on the front, that Bulldog's going to have to bite a chain if he's going to put this guy away. Yeah, but to put that uh, leader away, it's going to take a better run than 251. Again, more trouble in the shutdown area, and again, he wings the throttle to get out of trouble. A 298, a good run, though, 298 for Vukovic, and a 268 for Roger Sherwood. Yeah, the numbers are good. They're just not good enough right now, but what's got me worried is that far lane in the shutdown area. Everybody's starting to come out of there a little bit weird now. That's three in a row that have come out of there not straight. Well, they have to wing that throttle to get the car straightened out and hang on to control it, but they are, in fact, keeping them off the barriers so far. Well, the Florida boys are headed back to the Sunshine State. We're coming back to Ohio. The four-wheel jamborees are part of the special events performance series featuring a weekend of four-wheel fun. Check out the manufacturer's midway. There's also several categories of show and shine competition. Contact the special events promotion company to find out when a jamboree will be near your area. Well, there's a look at Henry Mattingly. Now, he's the driver of Magnum Force. He's done for the day, but looks quite comfortable at that. Some highlights now from Class 6 competition. There's Garland Walls and the Gambler against uh, Jody Nelson in split second. Walls, a little deuce coupe, had a little excitement himself, wiping out the timing clocks in the X1R special. Meanwhile, the rear engine dragster, a 305, not the number he's looking for. Well, let's put the equipment uh, back in order here so we can time some more runs like Dan Brown and Tony Farrell. Brown going in the lanes of the gambler in front of him, which wiped out the timing light. Did exactly the same thing, Gary. He hooked that rut in the right lane. A good pass for Tony Farrell, but he still couldn't catch Fred Wilhite. You know, Fred had a real good pass, and I knew it was going to be hard to beat. And, uh, you know, me and Dan was going to try to get him, but I just, guess not today. Well, another guy who couldn't quite catch Fred was Mike Camilla. Mike taking on Darren Ovington. Mike Camilla in that nasty right lane goes with cut DOTs, not paddles, and pushed his way to a 284. But he went straight, did not get caught in the rut, so it showed the right lane will work. There's your leader, Fred Wilhite, as he walks around and checks out the rest of the competition. All he can do now is watch. Back to the starting line, our final pair, Brian Harrell and Surf Rat. And he takes on Rob Marshall in beating the odds. So let's see if he can beat the odds and beat Fred Wilhite at the same time. Brian is part of a family operation. Fred, Bob comes out at a privateer. Both of them good runners trying to work their way to the top of this sport. Youth close to the camera, experience furthest away. I would not want to be in that far lane, though. Time's apparently not Gary's quick going over. Again. Oh, he is upside down. There goes the fiberglass body lands upside down. You can see the driver moving around inside the cockpit. Good shot by the camera crew. They can show you exactly what's going on. He's trying to dislodge himself and climb out. That's not the easiest way to get out of a race car, but he is okay. <laughs> Acknowledges the uh, cheers from the crowd. Now watch again the far lane. Good pass. The shutdown area is where the problem was, Gary. See? We talked earlier about the guys getting back on the throttle to save it. Perhaps he didn't get back on the throttle. Hooked that left rear just like a sprint car going over the cushion and rolls it on over. Sheds the fiberglass body. Minimal damage. He was all right. And here's Army. First of all, are you okay physically? Yeah, I'm fine. Why don't you go ahead and start taking your helmet off? Let the EMTs get with you. He's checking the damage on the vehicle. The chassis is twisted. It's bent. But the roll cage did hold up and protect the driver. But again, I want you to notice just exactly how muddy it is. We'll get them to pan the camera straight down. I'll show you. That's what they're trying to stop in right there. And that's causing some of the problems out here today. Gary, back up to you. Something uh, wasn't quite as bad as it could have been. Well, taking a look at the final standings, Fred Wilhite hangs on to win it at 251. Then it's Chuck Knoll, Jeff Myers, Roger Sherwood, and Rob Marshall. And now there's your winning car. Let's go talk to the winner. Here's Army. 
Well, Fred Wilhite does give us the number one sign, but he also gets the old NFL bat. Fred, congratulations to you. Kind of a strange day with the bite. The bite was there, then the bite went away, and they had a good lane and a bad lane and everything. That keeps showing us that this luck of draw for position is awfully important, isn't it? Yes, yes, that's a definite factor at these places like this. Uh, I just happened to be at the right spot at the right time. Did it feel like a 251 run to you? Yeah, the car actually felt like it hooked from start one to, to the finish line. I, I think it was carrying the front wheels about half track. It felt like it. It felt good. Well, for Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond Peace Sports.